Hi, and welcome to GIELTSHELP.com IELTS Test Preparation Videos. This speaking interview and the materials that you are about to see are taken from www.gieltshelp.com. For lots more help with the general IELTS exam and many more lesson videos, please visit us there and join our full course. In this lesson, you're about to see a native Arabic speaker sit the IELTS speaking interview. In this interview, he would likely score about a 7.5. After the interview, I will explain why his score would be about a 7.5. I will discuss the good points and the bad points, what he did well and what he could improve. First, let's watch the interview. Yes, come on in. Hello. Hi, good afternoon. Please have a seat. Thank you. My name is uh, Adrian. Um, may I have your name, please? My name is Mohammed. Okay, hi, Mohammed. Um, <clears throat> so, this is the speaking section of the IELTS exam. Uh, the interview will take about 12 to 15 minutes, okay? okay? I will ask you some questions. There will be three parts. I'll give you instructions for each part. Uh, and I'm going to record this for marking purposes. Is that okay? Yes. All right. Um, okay, so, uh, Mohammed, may I um, see your uh, passport, please? Sure. Thank you. No problem. Okay. All right. Um, here's your passport back. Thank you. And um, now we will begin uh, with part one. I'm going to ask you some questions on a general topic. Are you ready to begin? Yes, yeah. Okay, so Mohammed, let's talk about your family. Do you have sisters and brothers? If so, how many? Uh, yes, I come from a big family. I have six brothers and four sisters, and I am the second youngest in the family. All right. Yeah. Uh, what was it like growing up in your family? I had a lot of fun growing up. Having many siblings means always having someone around to play with. Uh, and so, as a child, I was almost never bored. Okay. Are your parents and grandparents from the same country as you? If not, where are they from? Just like me, my grandparents were also born in Saudi Arabia. My mother was also born there. However, my father was born in the United States during a time in which his father was studying in a university there. Hmm. Why do you think family is important? My family, <clears throat> sorry, my family is my foundation. Uh, life has lots of ups and downs, but family is the one part that remains constant no matter what. Okay. Is family life important in your country? I think family life is important in every country. So yes, it is important in Saudi Arabia. We are taught to respect and honor the people older than us and to teach and encourage those younger than us. Okay, that's the end of part one. Uh, now we will move to part two. Uh, for part two, I'm going to give you a card. The card will have some questions on it about a specific topic, okay? You're going to have one minute to prepare your answer. There's no paper in front of you, mm -hmm. and uh, here's a pen. You can you. Uh, take some notes if you'd like in the one minute. After your one minute preparation is over, I will give you 90 seconds to speak. I'll tell you when to start and when to stop, okay? okay. Um, so here is the card. Please keep it face down. Okay. Um, are you ready to begin? Yes, I am. Okay, so your one minute begins now. Go ahead, turn over the card, and sure. prepare.
Okay, Mohammed. so your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. One government worker that I truly respect is Nelson Mandela. He was the president of South Africa for a number of years, but his influence on South African and the world politics is so much greater than that. He, well, one great accomplishment of Mandela was bringing together two races in a country which had until then been totally separate. Achieving this unity took a lot of intelligence, determination, and years of hard work. Nelson Mandela was jailed for many years for protesting against the government. So he was, he was jailed for protesting against his government, but eventually his, he won his release, and then after that, the presidency of South Africa. He made South Africa a better country. So I think there's a lot to be learned from a man like Mandela. First, the importance of determination. And second, uh, and second, the value of standing up for what one believes in. And third, I believe Mandela taught the world that anything is possible. From standing up for what he believed in, to being jailed, to being freed, and then leading a country to prosperity. So a man like Mandela is truly or a man, like the, uh, a man like Mandela truly deserves everyone's respect. Okay, very good. Um, and the time is up, so um, we will now go to part three. And I'm going to ask you some questions uh, related to this topic. Uh, are you ready to begin part three? Yes, I am. Uh, let's talk about government workers and respect. Do you believe government workers are as respected today as they were in the past? If not, what has changed to make them less respected? Uh, that's an interesting question. Are you asking if today's society respects politicians as previous generations did? Uh, yes. Okay. Well, I think politicians are under increased pressure now due to the internet and social media. We know more about their lives. We know more about the bad things they might have done. So I think this could lead to decreased respect levels. Okay. Why do you think it is important for government workers to have the respect of society? I think it's important because it ensures that the government and society run smoothly. If government workers, such as politicians, are not respected, then the laws and the government might not be respected. Okay. Uh, government workers can earn the respect of people in many different ways. What are two ways in which a government worker can earn respect? Yes, I think there are different ways to earn, to earn respect. One is by being honest with the public. Second is by keeping election, uh, election promises. If a government worker is dishonest or breaks, uh, breaks uh, election promises, then it's hard to gain the public respect. All right, uh, I'm going to ask you a few more questions for part three. Uh, let's talk about being a government worker. Would you consider becoming a government worker? What factors contribute to your feeling? That is an interesting question. Can I please have a moment to think about it? Sure. Okay. I think being a government worker is very difficult. However, it can also be very rewarding. 
So if I have the right education and they have spent some time in the workforce, then yes, I would consider becoming a government worker. All right. What do you think is the hardest part of being a government worker? Why do you think people choose to work for the government despite all the difficulty the job entails? I think people choose to work in the government out of a sense of duty to their city or country, no matter how difficult it is. And the hardest part or the most difficult part about working in the government, I think would be being constantly in the public eye. All right, uh, that's the end of part three. And that concludes the speaking section of the IELTS exam. Um, you will get your mark with the other sections, with the official paper in about two to three weeks. Um, do you have any questions for me? No, I don't. Okay, then thank you very much, Mohammed, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Yeah, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. See you. All right, before we discuss the specifics of the inter interview and what was done well and what could be improved, let's quickly review the three important elements that the IELTS examiners are looking for in order to give high scores. All right, again, remember from previous lessons that the first and most important aspect of the speaking interview is coherence. To see the rest of this speaking interview and lesson, and for lots more help with the general IELTS exam, please visit us at www.gieltshelp.com and join our full course.